Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mothman Jones Movie Channel again. I am your host, as always, the great Bambino. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit of Star Wars today. Uh, Rise of Sky Skywalker came out on Blu-ray recently. I don't know if it's on Disney Plus yet, uh, but it's no, starting it's to show up, showing up on services and whatnot. So you you can watch it somewhere. Probably um, Netflix has it, I would assume. Something like that, probably, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and yeah, I feel like I never made my spoiler-filled podcast for it. And I feel like it's a good time now since people are home. I hope everybody's staying safe. God bless all the frontline workers out there. Um, and yeah, we're here. So I figured I have my good friend from Staten Island, Greg, here to talk about Star Wars with me. We, he is the Star Hello Wars there. guy. Uh, anything you want I'm to not say the Star Wars started? guy. You're the Star Wars guy. Oh well, yeah, you are too. Though we both went to Chicago. You you have a lot more knowledge in Star Wars than I than I do for sure. But yeah, yeah. I guess I, yeah, you, read, I do. you read the you read the books and everything. You know more of the lore than I do. But I'll just spit out characters that are the background for three seconds. I have knowledge oh, like, like oh, that. Oh yeah, like Max Rebo, your yeah, favorite, like my favorite. Star Wars character in the Blue Elephant existence. with all the all the tunes. Yes. Or uh, Figure and Don and the modal notes from uh, oh, New what? Hope. What? The fuck? Exactly. What exactly. <laughs> you know the characters, the characters in the cantina in New Hope, and like, it's like four or five of them. They're like, do 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 do. Oh my god. That's that's who they are. Oh uh, my god. You wouldn't yeah. know that. Anything you want to say before we get started on this? No, man. Let's okay. let's uh let's get into this shit. All right. Uh yeah. Uh so Rise of Skywalker came out in Ooh. December when life was still somewhat normal uh we the two of us and a couple others saw it for the first time and i feel like we all came out of it kind of going like eh, whatever uh, i swore a couple more times after that and i kind of enjoyed it more just because i knew what i was watching at that point so i just kind of accepted what it was uh and yeah i, I haven't seen it since then i go i want to buy the blu-ray first before i watch it i don't want to really pay for it uh so i want to pay for it that way um but my general if you didn't watch some of the other videos i made about the movie but the my general opinion is it is what it is. It's an okay ending for this whole Ugh. sequel trilogy. I, I mean, it, it's, I don't really have a strong opinion on it. I don't, I, Last Jedi is my favorite of the three. I think it's like, well, if you don't know, it's my third favorite Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. And I actually think it, it does, the way, it's a whole, we can get into the whole dirt of it. Yeah. The whole, it's a big mess. Uh, but judging it on its own merits as its own movie, it's an okay, fun Star Wars movie. It's not a good movie when it comes to the plot and like connecting to the story that we've had before. A lot of things don't make sense. But I feel like if you just turn your brain off and just watch it, it's, it's a fine space opera adventure movie. Uh, but what do you think, General? I, generally, speaking? I th generally speaking, I think it was just a giant clusterfuck of a mess. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, there's no like cohesiveness in this new trilogy whatsoever. And honestly, I'll be honest too. I hated Last Jedi when I first saw it, and you know that. I ranted it and raved to, raved to you for a long time about it. I couldn't shut you up. But after watching Rise of Skywalker and then going back and watching Force Awakens and Last Jedi, I'm like, huh, you know what? Last Jedi really wasn't a bad movie. Uh-oh. I think we lost Greg. In the... Uh, oh. I just, yeah, I don't know what happened. It's, it just said it, it quit un unexpectedly. Oh, I don't so you know. Can what just, happened. You, you can just start over from what you were talking about. All right. So uh, <laughs> rewind it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, exactly. I, I just thought it was, the movie was just a mess, man. I mean, it, this whole trilogy just didn't know where it wanted to go, you know? Like, I agree. You, you know, at least like in the original trilogy and even the prequels, as shitty as they are. The, the trilogy knew where it wanted to go. I feel like this movie, they didn't know what they wanted to do. Or maybe J.J. did, and then Ryan Johnson came along and said, no, I don't like this and that, and fucked it all up. Who knows? But I do appreciate Last Jedi more than Force Awakens and, and Rise of Skywalker. I mean, they're just trying to make up for what happened in Last Jedi and trying to make it all make sense. But the movie just feels like, I don't know, so I want to say it's, it feels forced. You know, like they're trying to force certain things and I just don't buy it. And I feel like in this movie, they over, they overdone it with the whole nostalgia. You know, like I feel like every scene I watched in that movie, there's just some kind of like nostalgia trip in there. Yeah. You know, and it's Disney trying to get you on their side even after this whole fuck up. But I don't I feel buy like it. 
Yeah, I feel like they tried to satisfy everybody, and by doing that, they satisfied not that many, if not really anybody. Yeah, because you can't you can't make a good movie with just based on nostalgia. Like, yeah, it's gonna win a lot of people over because people love the original trilogy. You know, it, it can't be your crutch for the whole movie, though. Exactly, you, you can't you can't stand on you can't stand on that man. You just I, you had to have. Yeah. I don't even know, man. <laughs> I just have so many thoughts. I mean, yeah, I don't but, know. We, well, maybe they'll make a documentary one day, like years from now, and they'll have everybody on board. They'll talk very candidly about what happened over the past yeah. four or five years. Like, how does? Uh, who knows if they'll even have the balls to like even talk about that? Because Disney's not going to want to put that reputation down. No, and really of get not. into the, it, get into the weeds like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like it started. The, my main problem with the movie is Palpatine. And oh. I mean, me and you both went ape shit when we found out that he was going to be in it. We did. I remember it's celebration. Yeah. But then you think about it and you're like, why? Oh, wait. But oh, wait a minute. Right. Yeah. And then also the, the novelization came out recently and they added more information to the whole thing and it makes So like it less Palpatine sense. is a clone, right? Yeah. Essentially. Or, or, so, or so they say. Yeah. God, I don't, I don't. I don't like that, but it just shows you that, like, I know, like, JJ said that, like, that was the plan all along was to bring Palpatine back and that Ray was his granddaughter and so on and so mm. forth. And you can clearly tell. I don't know about that. It, it wasn't, you know, like, and even so, Palpatine being in the movie, for me personally, it kind of just undoes, like, it just, everything that, like, happened in the original trilogy with Luke, you know, and Vader beating the Emperor and so on and so forth, I feel like now that means nothing. Yeah. Like, you know, I feel like now there's that, also that's there's just, no weight to it either because he was, he was introduced in the third movie of this trilogy. Like, yeah, even if you don't know who he is, you kind of. I feel like on both sides, if you're a fan or not, if you're a fan, you're like, he's coming out of nowhere. Why? And if you're not a fan, you see this and you're like, who the fuck is this old dude? That yeah, everybody talks about who is exactly. this guy. The new fan base isn't going to know who Palpatine is if they're just basing it off of Disney Star Wars seven, eight, nine, and so on and so forth, whatever they put out in the future. It, they're not going to know who Palpatine is, you know? Mm -hmm. He's just as always this old, powerful dude, and he's all, you know, scarred up, and, you know, he can shoot lightning, but that's it. But people don't really know who he is. At least the younger generation won't know because they may probably haven't seen the original trilogy or even the prequels. Maybe you know? not. Nah. But I don't know. Yeah, that's like one of my main gripes, though, is Palpatine being in it. I mean, I like seeing Ian McDermott back in his role, but it, again, it feels forced and unnecessary. Yeah. You know? Uh the way they use him was bad. I think that if they're going to bring him back, they could have found another way to do it or like have him influ has his, have his influence show up in a way yeah. that kind of maybe influences Kylo Ren played mm. by Adam Driver. Yeah. I mean, I and then every, the whole thing with Colin Trevorrow cuz since the movie came out, the whole thing with Colin Trevorrow's script came out and that's the for people who don't know who that is, it's the original director who came on board to uh, direct it. And I think he also wrote the first screenplay of the of the ninth movie and he had a whole script going he sent it into disney and apparently he was fired from it a little bit like a, a little while after carrie fisher passed away why was he fired and from it i i guess they couldn't agree him and people at disney even though apparently ryan johnson they had no problem with him writing his own script and he did his own thing mm -hmm. he looked at colin trevorrow's script and also he had a couple movies come no he came out with one movie specifically the year after jurassic world came out that right. wasn't received well at all. It actually got bad reviews. Oh, no. I think they were kind of they, were, <laughs> they kind of they looked at that and they were kind of like, yeah. I don't know about you anymore. We yeah. liked you, you. We liked you when you directed Jurassic World, but I don't. What did I don't you know think you of his uh, his actual like I guess outline for Episode Nine or his? I his I, I I like most of it. I mean, so did I. Was, I mean, I like the idea of them stealing a star destroyer in the first act, and it's like kind of like the pull thing. And then they had a lot of the arcs for finish in a cool way yeah they gave finn the whole stormtrooper rebellion thing which they did nothing um, with in this trilogy whatsoever and not really no and yeah. recently just watching force awakens like just now like i realized how cool of arc that could have been and they oh, yeah. wasted it on what him going to cancel by and last jedi with rose and that whole thing which like, was just the dumbest thing ever let's be honest yeah, was, but they, they still could have given them a, a good arc in this movie though they still could have found a way to make something weave there and well, they the, they, the most they do is that he meets this girl Jana, and she was like him and there's other people that are like them that were abandoned stormtroopers who abandoned their plight 
right. but they don't really do anything with it. They just kind of like go, oh, yeah. Exactly. That could have been, it's just like, yeah, we acknowledge that, but we're not going to do anything with it, though. You yeah, know? he hasn't become like a leader. They don't really show his progress as a leader in the sense no. of where he and used to be. I'll bet money they are going to write a book about that whole Finn and Janet thing. Probably. And I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't not put money down the road like the years from now, like maybe like 10 years from now, maybe they make another set of movies maybe not a trilogy but like they kind of re- they return to some of these characters if they're willing to make new movies right like a john boyega and daisy ridley and poe, Dam- poe dameron and oscar isaac, are oscar like, isaac. <laughs> like if they're if they're all like i guess we need money like maybe yeah. they'll do something and they'll redeem their arcs better who knows but yeah, i wouldn't they, be opposed to that but they I do deserve some kind of resolution with their characters you know like, yeah. and i feel like I, I feel like i got none of that in rise of skywalker no. As far I, as like their whole friendship went, even so in the movie, I felt like it wasn't even there, you know? Again, another thing that felt forced was their friendship, you know? I, Ray and Finn, I understand because they spent the whole, most of the movie uh, Force Awakens together, sure. Last Jedi, they weren't even together, and now all of a sudden, they're like best friends riding around the Millennium Falcon, and everything's all good, and I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's a whole mishmash. It, it, it what's, really what's, is. I mean, like, when we get down to it, what's the whole point of the Rise of Skywalker movie? What, what did they, what are they, what are they trying to get out of it? Make that? money. That's it. it. It was really nothing. They didn't know what to do. And again, Ryan Johnson came along, and he, I'm sure JJ had a plan for all these characters for the whole trilogy. Let, I mean, JJ's got to finish this trilogy. He can't just let somebody else take the reins and and let them do what they want. Yeah, you know? and I, I guess it's a really. I, I can only imagine the process of making a movie, let alone a Star Wars movie, but they probably could have let him be a producer or something. Yeah. They could have probably yeah. let him like just be on set and be there during the screenwriting process. Like, well, actually, I kind of liked, I wanted this to happen here, and I kind of imagined this happening to this character. So you could be like, all right, so at least I have a guideline. That's kind of yeah, like, exactly. like that's what the MCU does. Like, did they yeah, not Kevin's- communicate like at all? Like Ryan Johnson or JJ? <laughs> like. You would think that, like, Ryan Johnson would ask him, so, like, what what did you have in mind for, the, you know, the second movie? Because the second movie is really what, where you want to build more on the plot and what's going on in the it galaxy. Is, it is really weird. I mean, as much as I love Last Jedi, it is weird. There, Disney was just kind of like, okay, JJ, did a great job. Awesome. Uh, bye. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's a new guy. Yeah. Just let just do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. If, I don't think Ryan's lying because Ryan's not the kind of guy to lie. Or at least you never know like that. From, you, know. you don't know that, but he said like you don't he know had, Hollywood. But he they said no he had. I mean, but if Disney had more control, you think they would have changed some of the things in Last Jedi? No. Yeah, you would. I mean, you would think so. I mean, like how can you watch? I mean, after you finish filming and doing all the editing and so on and so forth, I'm sure they have to sit down and watch the entire movie before actually putting it out on the market. Well, you know, they didn't. All, most movies in general have test screenings with audiences and then the audiences take surveys afterwards and they say what they did what they didn't like that happens a lot with a lot of big movies so they could like re they could do like um what's the word i'm looking at? i'm my mind's going crazy reshoots when they do like right. reshoots they add coverage and they like they'll change things like a lot of horror movies they change the ending because a lot of tests want to be like well i didn't like this character died or this this, this. they're like all right well, Let's they can't be listening to an audience. They have to, you know, I mean, yeah, even so, yeah, I guess no, listening but, to an audience is good, but I mean, at the same time, though. But the point is, there was no feedback from people at all. Like, and they thought that was don't good. Watch. They thought it was okay. I guess I, they, they, they didn't. They didn't think of. They didn't think of the the, the <laughs> possible consequences of just putting a movie out without knowing what other people that don't watch in the industry think. I don't know. Maybe they just weren't like Star Wars fans, you know? Maybe they're just like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll watch a movie for two and a half hours and see what I think about it. Maybe. There's, a lot, of, there's a lot of ingredients in there that could could have made the whole process wrong. Mm-hmm. But I, I, you would hope that they learned their lesson for the future, for future movies. I mean, hopefully. But, but that's what I hope. I mean, now we're getting a whole, like, expanded book universe, which, you know... Let's see how that's going to be. That's but. a whole other conversation. But I yeah, mean, that's no, that's like another time. But the, the potential is really cool for what they're doing with that. It word. is. Um, but I'm trying to. Is there anything you did like in the movie? <laughs> there are some things that Characters, I like. Sets, it, scenes. The, the, some of the sets I liked. I mean, some of the visuals were amazing. I, I have to give him credit for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, JJ's visuals were 
amazing. I can't say anything wrong about that, but just like I said, it's just the way Force Awakens and Last Jedi led up to this mess. Like that's what I don't like is nothing yeah. was. Re- I mean, the one con- the one constant I, I really love is Kylo Ren's arc. I mean, he, he's just oh, that's he's, been like the one thing I've, I've I've approved of thus far is from Force Awakens up until Rise of Skywalker. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, he's the glue. It's I feel like even like when history writes itself for like movies yeah. and stuff, that's yeah. Like even kids who are growing up with this will probably one day be like, he's the best part. I don't know how it's going to be in ten years. People could people are talking really awesomely about the prequels now, which is out. which is complete bullshit. Because like I mean, it's not bullshit because I can kind of I I've always <laughs> I've always liked them too, but I can also acknowledge at the same time that they're not yeah. good movies. I mean, they're, not, kid, they're not good movies. No, not at all. I mean, I'm, I'm sure but, as like as a kid when we were going back as kids, like back in the day, back when was it 1999 when Phantom Menace came out. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm sure we all loved it at the time, but as we grew older, started realizing, oh, this is actually dog shit. Like, what is this? No, it's I, 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 in my mind, I put it more as I like this part of it, and I like this aspect. I like this character, and I like these aspects of the movie. But the right. actual movie as a whole does not make an actual movie that's great or coherent or anything. I think the 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 close the one that makes the closest the one that's closest to an actual movie is the Revenge of the Sith. Because you have the pathos and like the journey of like the hero falling down, it's very tragic and it's. Yeah. I think it's really it's it's a long movie, but I think it's mostly well done. It is. Um, I I don't have any problems with Return of uh, Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Sith. I really. I'm not. I'm not saying I love it, but I mean it. It is. It's a good story, man. Of just. <laughs> someone's dark descent into madness you, know, you, you don't know? get you don't get that a lot in trilogies either where the third movie ends like that and you just it's it's very dark well it's a very yeah. dark way to end off a trilogy but we all yeah, know, we, what, we know what this leads into yeah if, exactly if you're, watch, if you're a kid and you're watching that first you're like yeah oh i don't what? like this the, the hero doesn't the hero the heroes don't win what is this like this isn't a <laughs> this isn't a real movie <laughs> I, I saw I before i'll get back on where this guy were but i saw it on Twitter recently, there was like a standee from, I don't know if it was real, but it was from 2005 and it said, whose side are you on? And it was Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader next to each other. And they're like, and somebody wrote <laughs> over that. This is like US politics. Yeah, I saw, I think I saw that actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, um, it's but yes, same thing applies for this movie. I feel like when I think about it, every time I think about Roger Skywalker, I think of things I like, like uh, I like Babu Frick. Just how ridiculous of a character he is! This little, like, this little tiny oh, dude who fixes droids. Yeah. I like that. I like that stupid animatronic snake that Ray heals because it looked cool. Oh, I'm like oh, does thing. like yeah. like space space worms, space snakes. Right. Um, yeah, Kylo Ren's arc. As much as, as as much as people don't like the whole thing with Ray and Kylo kissing and like him sacrificing himself, I kind of uh, actually. Don't get me started on that one. <laughs> I, no, I'll be honest. I that's why we're that's why we're here though. We're here to discuss I, Rise I of got, Skywalker. <laughs> I gotta watch the movie again, but the third I time too. I saw this with my brother in theaters, I actually didn't mind the whole him coming to save Ray and then them coming back up and kissing and then he dies. The only thing I don't like about that ending is that he just immediately dies. There's no dramatic pause. There's no moment for him to like say anything or not like nothing to be like, there's not this, there's, there's nothing there. And then he just, he just passes out you know, like, Oh, yeah. he's dead. That's it. And then he comes on with the force, which doesn't make, doesn't make any yeah. sense either because I again, just... I, I mean, I mean, the kiss I have so many problems with, I mean, Again, another thing I felt that was forced in this trilogy was Kylo and Ray's relationship, I guess, so to speak. I, I, I don't know? think, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can agree and I can also disagree because I feel like it kind of sets up in The Last Jedi, but it's, it's suggestive. A but little it's bit. Not, it's not like on the nose. It's like they, you could tell they like each other or like in some kind of way they have respect for each other. Sure. I don't know. You could, I, I feel like The Last Jedi is kind of horny in that sense. <laughs> I feel like it's just glances at each, they're like, They'll, they'll come back to each other and then she sees well him listen man sure was kylo ren <laughs> yeah exactly i mean adam driver he's he's pretty sexy i won't lie he's got the oh, hair yeah. and the bod yeah very and he's yeah very very aggressive he's a very <laughs> aggressive dude i can imagine i don't mind kylo dying and doing what he did i just feel like i need like an extra moment or like even like a line of dialogue just that would have satisfied me yeah one line of dialogue but before he died i don't care yeah i, I mean uh... <laughs> oh god you're laughing are I you drunk can't. by the way no it's my first beer actually i have about seven more oh, okay. so I got, <laughs> I got a whole hour i'm no, saying i, I mean uh, just the kiss again i felt like it was just so it, it felt out of place after all that you know 
Yeah, Especially no, like I can, Force I can Awakens. Totally, I could see how people could think that for sure. In Force Awakens too. I mean, like Finn and Ray had a little bit of something going on there. Like obviously Finn really cared about her, and, and Ray uh, cared about him. Again, nothing ever came of it, and then you had the whole bullshit with Rose te- with Rose, and that oh, that. can't even deal with that one. Well, I, I I don't like, but it's also funny how they just kind of like how Rose is like, I we're like Rose, come with us, and then. No, like Finn's like, Rose, yeah, Finn's like, Rose, come with us. And she's like, nah, I got things to do here. Yeah. And he's like, you sure? And she's <laughs> like, yeah, I, I got to like look over a map or something. Uh, I'm really busy here. It, Almost. Did, <laughs> she had like, what, two minutes, two minutes of screen time? Maybe less than that? Yeah. The, and the entire movie? Somebody put like the stats up recently. And it was like, yeah, I think it was like probably something like that. I saw it a while ago. I forgot what it was. But no, getting back to Kylo Ren and dying. Like my, my main gripe is the fact that he became one with the Force, even though doing that looking at the like the history and the mythology of the jedi like that takes a lot like, like years and years of mastery to get down you know mm-hmm. like qui-gon was a master jedi and he knew how to do it obi-wan knew how to do it uh yoda you know luke and being that kylo was so young and you know he was a sith for however many years i doubt all of a sudden he can just become one with the force like i don't understand how it's possible Mm. Yeah, no, like that's like my main gripe about that, you know. Yeah, like where did this, where did he learn how to do that? There's no it's, great sense of progression with no. these, I mean, especially with this I, movie. You and I know that, like the well, you, I mean, we both know like lore and history of Jedi and Sith and so on. We know like Jedi are the ones that are able to become Force ghosts, and Sith can really only haunt like what objects, right, or relics. I'm, something like that yeah they could take hold they could take hold of one thing so if like i don't know for example yeah <laughs> this this great pepsi this... can i'm not sponsored by pepsi uh <laughs> but like if if uh general grievous he's not a sith my bad no. if palpatine died in this room and like he touched this i guess before he died i guess he could like possess the spirit of this can so if somebody else like me touched it boom i'm haunted by palpatine right for god knows how long i don't know how to work i don't know how it would work after that yeah, I'm not uh, too sure, but I mean, oh God, I, it's just fucking movies. It that would have been that would have been cool. I I like the idea in my head of like, like a ghostly, like a even like a ghostly Palpatine. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. I'm just thinking like in my mindset as a filmmaker, like what you could do with that, like have an ominous spirit like over lurking Kylo yeah. for the whole movie Maybe. and have that influence him more. But that's go the towards, thing. Like if Palpatine was, if he was like like this sh- like like figurative shadow like in like kylo ren's mind or whatever or maybe uh i don't know like if they gave any kind of hint that he was there like any small hint like in force awakens or last jedi then i can buy palpatine being in this movie but there's no yeah. mention whatsoever in any of the movies that he was going to come back it's just one of those things the opening crawl just says the oh dead the speak. dead speak and it's, it's like so oh stupid. so all of a sudden palpatine's back <laughs> And like I can understand too, maybe if they explained it in the movie somewhere how he's back, but they don't. So now you're telling me you have to go read a book to figure out why he's back. Like I don't. That kind of information should be said in the movie, not in a book. Yeah. You know? I, just, I don't know. I mean, I guess they had the. I'm I'm thinking like they had a, a timeline of when they had to finish the movie, and Chris Terrio, the screener, was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. Uh, put it in the crawl. Yeah, they'll they'll do it. They'll accept yeah. that. They'll, yeah, they'll take that. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what else happens in this? Uh, what do you what do you what do you feel about Carrie Fisher the way they use her? I thought she was I thought she was used very well for the limited things they can do with her. I thought it was. I mean, I don't envy them for trying to figure that whole thing out. Uh, yeah, that's. I, I mean, can only imagine the stress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's. Oh my god! Even like <laughs> again, when I was watching Force Awakens and Carrie Fisher comes. On for the first time, I was like, "Oh, thank God, there she is!" Like, and I just get sad, but it, it was handled very yeah. well, in my opinion, for what little they can yeah. do with her. If you so. if you really try to examine it, you could see like how clunky it might sound, like the way they write other characters' dialogue around her stuff. From yeah, Force Awakens. I, it, it's but very it's, noticeable, it's, but it, it's it works. Decent. It's yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's, and, uh, th- like thank God they didn't like CGI her because that would have been a major uh, like disrespect. A lot of people, the character uh, and the actor. Yeah, actress. I agree. I agree. A lot of people that, not that I know, but people I follow, like, like the notion or idea of her being recast, but I don't, 
I wouldn't have liked that personally if they recast her with some other actress. No, I been, wouldn't like that either. Because I feel like no matter if I feel like what they wanted to do with her seemed like it kind of happened in this movie where I feel like she had a moment with with her son to like turn him. I feel like the whole I feel like no matter what there was going to be a moment where Carrie where Leia would turned her son back over to the light in some way, and they kind of yeah. were able to do that. By like having her just kind of, just kind of yeah. float away, uh, it doesn't really make the most sense to me that Han Solo comes back and he gets that that Kylo gets to see his dad, but he's not right. really a. That's, Can you I'm just acknowledge to, how cool it is that Harrison Ford came oh, back to that I'm, one? They little, gave him. They, probably, they, they gave him like fifty million dollars. They had. They had. I hope they wrote him a very nice check because half half the budget went to that. <laughs> I mean, Harrison Ford does not care about stars whatsoever, but I mean, I'm glad he was in the movie and they didn't like CGI him, but I, yeah, that was no, the, actual, I, the actual scene. I thought was really good. How they yeah. recited the dialogue from force awakens. Yeah. And like, it's, well, it's the opposite now. Now he's turning to the light instead of fully turning to the dark and right. throws the lightsaber. He's like, whoop. Yeah. Like that, that. Yeah. Like that was the time that was when Kylo Ren died and then solo came back. So I, I appreciated that. And yeah, I mean, I guess it was just the memory then, because there's no way that Han Solo wasn't a Jedi, so he can't become one with the Force. So I guess he had to be a memory then, you know? I guess. I have to. I have to assume. Yeah, I guess it's like it's in Kylo's mind that he's seeing. He's like it's his own projection of his father. Yeah, I guess so. Like maybe like what he would say to him in this time when he's conflicted, and you know, yeah. I, I guess that maybe that's what Kylo was imagining at the time. I have oh, to probably. assume at least. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. John's trying to get in right now. But hmm. for those who don't know, my oh, other friend John's trying to get into this while we're talking. And I'm like trying to do multiple things. Uh, oh, you never used the app. Can you send oh. me an invite? I've never used the app. I'm a house party oh, guy. Good Lord. Wait, does he ha- if he doesn't have the app, I don't know if he can go in. No, he can't. Oh, I here mean, he goes. He here can... he comes. Here he comes. Oh, God. We are now being joined by... John Anderson. John Ryan. You have to, you have to connect your audio. Uh-oh. Hello. Hello. Oh my God, we got John. Also, Greg froze. Wait. Uh-oh. Oh, there he goes. Fre- Greg's back. Yeah, I dude, it quit unexpectedly. I don't know what happened. That was very strange. So yeah, everybody, got to introduce you to my good friend John, also on Staten Island. How are you doing? You saying safe? Oh, hello. Yes, I'm doing good. Very good. Cool. Cool. Uh, we're, are you both drinking beers and I'm the one drinking water right now? Like a, like a it's bitch? quarantine, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. Mm. I mean, I, I've had got a, a lot point. of soda. We have not gone to a bar in a very long time. So I know. get a beer no. and let's do this thing. I do have beer. So I, maybe I'll drink later. Yes. Uh, but let's get back on the conversation, I guess. Uh, we were talking about Carrie uh. Fisher and we just talked about it in general. Like what we were, what's going on with certain scenes? Uh, I'll, be right, I'll be right back. I'm getting into the beer. <laughs> okay, you have fun. Uh, John, you any, can you get me a Bud Light? Yo, you gotta do a plot attack. That's my move right now. The plot attack. A plot attack. No plot. Plot a, attack. A plot attack. Oh, I never heard of that. That's a good one. I'm gonna steal that. It's alright. You can take it. Uh but yeah, I guess what were we talking about? We were talking about Carrie Fisher. We were. We already mentioned, we were talking Mm -hmm. about how, like, if we agreed with her implementation into the movie, if it was well done or not. It was weird. Because Greg Greg thought it was fine, and I kind of think, given the circumstances, they did a decent job. I think it's the the best they could have done. That's what I think. Was there anything uh, you would have rather have? Would was there anything you wanted from her that you would prefer instead of what they did with her, with her, with her and Kylo and him being like them communicating with each other, and she passed on after that? Is there anything? Honestly, like the the thing I would have preferred more, I think, is I mean, obviously, couldn't prepare for this or expect that to happen, but I think Last Jedi kind of had it backwards, and they probably should have killed off. Carrie versus Luke in that situation, mm. but obviously you can't foresee that situ- what you know circumstances occur in real life. Yeah. So if if that that's what I would have preferred, if if you asked me just point blank, but with well we, the situation we were given, 
honestly, I don't know. I feel like maybe she would have been better off just being um, not in the movie, I think. I think it would have been less distracting mm-hmm. if she just wasn't in the movie at all. Yeah, I can see that. Kind of buy- like how uh, Keith wasn't even mentioned in Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, you just, you just kind of assume he's in jail or he's just running amok somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, is there anything from the movie that you would specifically want to mention? Good or bad? Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, there's, there's nothing to choose from because it's a nothing movie. Kidding. Listen, I I was saying before that I just kind of I think it's an okay movie if you don't really care about Star Wars it's an enjoyable watch but if you if you are invested in the lore it kind of just like there's a lot of issues going on. We were just kinda, I don't like, know what the big deal stuff. is with Poe Dameron. I'll be honest. The big deal. I don't you know. Think, Everybody's you, like you everybody they, loves him, and I'm kind of like he's good. Oh, you're talking, about, you're talking about audience's perception of him. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, he's awesome. Movie. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, he's like Han Solo. And I'm like, uh, I, don't, well, I don't see it. So I think he had potential in the first movie. I saw what they were going for. Um, but they kind of do nothing with him. They did a decent arc with him, I think, in Last Jedi. But they okay, kind of do I nothing. I don't know what the hell happened with my fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, I invited you back in. It's all good. All we're right. Talk, we're talking Thanks. about how John mentioned how he thinks that people are overhyping Paul Poe Dameron as a character. And I was about to say <laughs> how they did nothing with him in this movie, Rise of Skywalker. So it is kind of, they had, he had a potential as a hotshot jerk. He did. You were doing there, but they don't, they don't do anything with him in this movie. He's just kind of there. Yeah. It, he's, I mean, he is definitely a hotshot for sure. I mean, you know, he's got, a, not like he's got, yeah, you know, I mean, he does have that hotshot attitude and you see it a lot in last Jedi, which is cool. But again, they, really don't do anything with him mm-hmm. it, like oscar isaac is very underused in this movie it, it, i feel like i feel like a lot i feel like this movie is tr- is trying to make us it's trying to have the impression that we've watched like 20 movies with these characters so it's just like mm-hmm. oh look at their relationship they're all like best friends now but you kind of yeah. you don't feel that you don't feel the emotions in this movie because you don't care about their camaraderie i exactly. guess exactly Exactly. But, I mean, at least in the original trilogy, you see that from A New Hope all the way to Return of the Jedi. You know, yeah. even with Obi Wan and Anakin in the prequels, like again, that's another thing that's also prominent. You know, like there is oh, yeah. a relationship there. In you know, it's it, not well done, but you do. It's it is there enough. Yeah, where like you do understand. You know what it is? I think they could have had a really good relationship with all these characters between Finn, Ray, and Poe. But I think Last Jedi kind of like split, like kind of ruined that because Ray was off training for most of the movie and Oscar and Poe Dameron was on the ship and he was fighting with uh, the Admiral and Finn was doing that, that useless thing of fucking Canto Bite that really did not matter whatsoever. It's my only problem with that movie is yeah, that yeah, you know, I know. everything else I love for the most mm-hmm. part. Uh, but I'm trying to think of other things in Rise of Skywalker that people talk about specifically. Oh, they killed Nine Nub. They mentioned they this, this is they really did. a really small fact, but the uh, the little guy from people who don't know in Return of the Jedi, he's like he's like a side character, but he was like the, the co-pilot, co-pilot of for- Lando. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And apparently he died when when uh, Palpatine did that, that lightning strike right, on all of, like the rebellion right. ships, mm-hmm. resistance ships. I'm yeah. too. It's, you could tell how old we are if like I start saying like rebellion and not resistance because all the young kids mm-hmm. are like resistance, resistance. You're like no, I know. it's a rebellion. No, it's the rebellion. But all right, <laughs> can we talk about how like OP Ray is in this fucking movie? I because that's I like know. that's like my big gripe in this whole entire uh, movie is how powerful she is. So she's able. They introduce a new thing with in this movie where you're able to force heal. But right. it takes out a lot out of you. So that's the whole thing what we were talking about with Kylo before, how he basically sacrificed himself because he put his whole life force into her. So she could force heal things. I don't mind the idea of her being able to like take ships, even though I think the whole thing was stupid. With, by the way, we'll get in the whole <laughs> Chewbacca thing where he oh. like, dies. Like, he like, dies like three times. Uh, but I think he dies, he dies one time. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. Yeah. That, yeah, the only that I guess. I'm not. I wasn't really bothered by the four seal thing. I think it just kind of. Yeah. I don't know how to really, really explain it. I don't think she. 
was that overpowered. I think the healing thing kind of took a lot of the tension out of everything. They did take a lot of time to it. Yeah. But overall, about Ray being like overpowered and stuff, I don't know. Like, I feel like, like if you look at the original trilogy, Luke kind of gets really strong with the Force out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere. Presumably, he's been training for years at that point. Yeah, but, but he's been, he's you been could training say that with Yoda him. for a long time, however many years it's been between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And Last Jedi, when she's training with Luke, Luke didn't really teach her anything that was shown on screen, at least. Not really. You know? not, yeah. not that much. So, yeah, and I mean, and again, if... The, if the whole thing is is that Leia was training her the entire time from Last Jedi mm-hmm. up until Rise of Skywalker, Leia, even so, Leia, you know, they said Leia dipped down on training like years ago. So, really, how much knowledge can she have to teach Rey? You know? Yeah, that's a lot of knowledge that you can't really yeah. explain like, unless it's in a book or something. Exactly. I mean, or you, you show see, it in the you movie. Never, you never see Force Seal appear ever in any of the movies. And Force Seal, I guess, is a thing from the old canon. You know, if you play like any of the... Uh, is like, it? Like, old Repu- yeah, I, I guess like in Old Republic, you can Force Seal. Like, that's an ability. But, you know, and that, that's the thing. I feel like Disney is just like nitpicking certain things from the old canon and just putting it in here. Like, whatever they like in the old canon, we're just going to put it in here. Even though that old canon has been wiped away completely. Mm. You know? Well, now they're going to probably bring it back for this... High Republic thing or whatever the, the shit. Uh oh, did we lose Greg again? Oh, I, no, I don't did. know why the <laughs> hell I keep crashing. I'm my I my freaking laptop is right next to the goddamn fucking router. You you would you would think you're on another planet right now. You would think so. You would really think so. Yeah, no, I'm actually Doctor Manhattan. I just teleported to Mars and I'm yeah, just, can't that's, take that's, any. That, that's my quarantine right there. <laughs> it's just teleporting to Mars. I've I've had enough with the what's the quote. I've had enough of the lives of these. I don't know. Oh, uh, I don't yeah. Know. I, I can't. I know the. I know. I, I love that quote too. Uh, I'm uh, tired of like being entangled in their lives. You should. You should make your virtual background on this app, the Mars, in in Watchmen. Mm. Yeah, and just Doctor Manhattan sitting on that rock and you're just yeah. like looking. <laughs> so but, silly. Yeah, uh, I mean, I but getting back to like the whole Ray thing, I just I don't like how overpowered she's become, but because it just. It doesn't make sense how she's that powerful. Oh, okay, she's Palpatine, Palpatine's. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we had him. He was in the middle of a heated moment. I was about to say, I, I was ready for what like, he was going to say, and now on. it's now it's gone. Take me, take me, Greg. Come oh, on. God. So we're talking. We're still talking about Ray. Uh, yeah, but. Yeah, I didn't really mind it as much. Mm-hmm. But I do understand where people are coming from with that argument. I feel like she de- definitely, because Les Jedi set her, so, set her up so much as like a nobody that I was kind of like, like you have all of Les Jedi to kind of like accept that. I really and don't know the fact what's that they change it. <laughs> there you go. There all, you. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Do you, is there four screens on your guys right now? Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Oh, now, now it's three. Gone. Okay, no, I'm like, because we have, we have a clone Greg. Like, we have a clone Palpatine, just like this. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Just paused. Um, oh, yeah, tired. we talked about that. But, yeah, how do you... Isn't it, like, the greatest implement... Isn't that the greatest thing about new lore? Is that you can... It just it felt so forced. I'm like, there's no reason that he should be in that movie. He died at the end of the sixth one. I guess he's a clone. It just It just feels... Like, how can we get people back in the seat? Because I know, like, somebody like my dad, who didn't really care for Force Awakens, didn't really care for Less Jedi, but surprisingly, he's like, oh, I liked Rise of Skywalker. And I feel like that's the case for, like, most of the older generation that mm-hmm. really grew up with the original trilogy. I think they feel like this one has, like, everything that they were looking for, in a way. But I, I think guess. it's definitely not the most organic way you could have done it yeah i don't know i guess is we were talking before greg and i but i feel like they they had no idea what they were doing with this whole trilogy and they kind of like had different people saying different things so they, they had no win out of this no i matter don't what they think did. they had any clear path whatsoever from the beginning i mean i, I just i don't man i i'm sorry to say it 
No, but because you, you could like the prequels, but at least the prequels, you don't have to like them, but at least there was like a, you could at see least, the pathway. Yeah, there. well, at least Lucas knew where he, I mean, we all knew where it was leading to. It was leading to Anakin's downfall and thus becoming Darth Vader and the rise of the Empire. Like, we knew where it was going. And this one, like, where was this all leading to? It, it, well, even, when movie, even when it ends, where does the movie kind of leave off? Like, what's the like, what's in store for the next few movies whenever we get them? Like, what are they going to do next? You know, that's like, that's the thing. You don't really unless they what they should introduce new character. I don't know. I'm really. I feel introduce I feel new like Sith the characters. Thing, the thing that Disney needs to ask themselves was what? Are we, what's the story we're telling in this trilogy? And there and were, I don't yeah, think they ever, they never answered that question. It was, it was, just, it was money. Greg remake, said it before. It was money. <laughs> mm-hmm. How could we remake the original trilogy, mm. but change it? Because that's what people want. It was just too reactionary. Yeah, yeah it was reactionary. If, I think if they went into it and were like, all right, here's our goal for this trilogy, it would have turned out. It would have been at least more coherent, I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't feel like, because you watch Force Awakens and it's like, oh, I'm on board. Like, I, I see where this is going. And then Last Jedi feels like such a departure from that story. That's the and only problem. Yeah. It's, the worst part yeah. that they brought JJ back. So then it feels like you're just ignoring everything in Last Jedi. And this is the sequel to Force Awakens. It, yeah. And it's yeah. just very disjointed. And it's like being I think on a it's biggest issue. It's like being on like a road that you have you've been on before and like you find a fork in the road and then so you go you go left or right. So you just go left and then you find out, oh you actually have to take a this exit, go to this side street. Oh, you also have to go to this cul de sac and come around. Like it gets really muddled. Uh mm-hmm. but I feel like yeah, that, that, that was the biggest problem because I loved Last Jedi as a movie, but in this whole thing, I wanna really I'm really curious to see how people like opinionate this whole trilogy in like five years ten years yeah because the prequels yeah people marinates the whole narrative about the prequels for the longest time was this is a disaster we need better movies and that's why disney bought star wars in the first place to give that hope of like oh we're gonna get like the right thing now but like i wonder i really i feel like how are kids gonna grow up with this and perceive it as compared to us old fucks yeah we're (laughs) <laughs> who will be complaining about it or or will like it more i don't know yeah who knows who knows you know the future of star wars is uncertain right now you know nobody knows where anything's going yeah I, Listen, as I long as you, mandalorian season two still comes out on time i'll be happy they they finished they wrapped up so oh, they, they just, finished yeah oh, so they, can just gotta do post, they just gotta do post post production which they could do in their mm-hmm. offices on their own right yeah Technically speaking, I think like I really like Mandalorian. I don't think it's my favorite thing Star Wars related, but it's definitely like. But at least it's new. Really good, it's, yeah. And it's like you, you, you're, you're getting you, you can get a new audience from it because you're doing different things for the most part with different characters, and you could have people can attach themselves because you don't. There's nothing else there. There's no like toxic. It's, there's no toxic moments. I'm, mm. I'm losing my brain. There's nothing toxic about this because it's all fresh well it's very standalone too like even though it takes place after return of the jedi it, it's refreshing to see something different that's not your traditional like star wars like jedi versus sith-esque thing you know no. like I, I i think what makes it so good is the fact that it's it's you're you're exploring like the criminal underworld the bounty hunting and the, the star wars universe which you've never really seen before you know it's always yeah, right. been you know, Jedi versus Sith, you know, Rebels versus Empire, clones versus droids. It's always been that same thing. This is the first time we're seeing, like, you know, Bounty Hunter versus Bounty Hunter. And, I mean, even though the whole Baby Yoda thing is kind of Jedi-related, but, you know, yeah, but I, can't it's, be mad, I can't be mad at Baby Yoda. I mean, come on, things fucking adorable. It's, <laughs> yeah, well, it's just more of a thing, like, if you know about Star Wars, like, you'll recognize things and you'll recognize locations, but it's not, it's not, like, unlike this Rise of Skywalker, it's not, like, it's not the crutch of the movie where you have to like nostalgia. Like it's, Oh, I see that. I understand what that is, but it doesn't take away from what the show's doing. Right. I think there's also something to when the prequels came out, there was two years between each movie. Three. And I think three. there was three, three, three. 1999, 2002 like and 2005. Time. Yeah. 
So that's great. It's, like, it's having that having that time to just let things marinate and like speculate mm-hmm. is. I part think of that would have would have helped this trilogy a little bit because in this case, I guess to my point there is that it was two years between that, but then there was just more stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're. I I'm, feel like that gap built anticipation, but it's hard to say because now in this generation, you have people with all their fan theories and stuff and it's hard but to they, say I mean, but there are like fan there th- but there are, but there are fan theories for this back even like during the old movies too it's just done differently there's yeah. more a- there's more access to like information now yeah difference, so the difference is, is we have social media now that's the thing yeah but i don't know if it was a disney thing where they had to recuperate the money they took a loss on from selling it to george lucas in a certain mm-hmm. amount of time i don't know if that had anything to do with that the time gap I don't know Could if that, I don't know how that works. Like if it, we have to get back the three four three point four billion dollars in this amount of time to make this deal work, or whatever. I don't yeah, know. I'm Maybe. just speculating. Because they they probably threw so much money at that and put money other in, in the theme parks and yeah. all their other resources. So, but I think they definitely between Force Awakens and Rogue One, I feel like they recouped. Oh, the they, made, they, they, made, they made their money back, I think, after, yeah, I think by like late 2016. Mm-hmm. 2020, I think that's when they, they hit that, that bar. Uh, but like, I don't know, yeah. After this, they had to, obviously, they're refocusing their efforts now. They keep like getting new writers for like Obi Wan, the Obi Wan show, and they keep changing things. And everything's obviously delayed now, besides maybe Mandalorian. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, now, well, also, series. by the way, this is this is now man, this is now general Disney Star Wars talk. Star- yeah, oh, no, no <laughs> longer Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> there's nothing. This Rise of Skywalker is so uninteresting that there's nothing else to talk about. So we're just I, talking. I, yeah, might as well call it like, just a Star Wars podcast. You know, like we're not really yeah, dis- true. I mean, with minor like Rise of Skywalker like discussions. That was the I mean, starting point. I mean, if you're still watching <laughs> this right now on YouTube, then like obviously you 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 care more about the conversation you do about the actual topic of just specifically Rise of Skywalker. Because there is a lot more to get into anyway. A lot to get yeah. into. <laughs> but yeah, I just wonder, yeah, at this point, I just wonder what they, do they learn their lesson from here? Do they just do the same thing again? They're not really incompetent though, because I mean, aside from the movies, they've been putting out some good product, man. I mean, Clone Wars season seven has been pretty good for the most part. I have some minor complaints as far as like the episodes that are out right now currently. Yeah, I heard there's but, a final arc now of that, by the way. This, this today was the start of the, the last arc. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. I, I have to watch, watch it yet. Recent epi- I have to watch recent episode. I haven't uh, caught up yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, like, you know, that's great. Mandalorian's amazing. You know, they're not incompetent. They can make some good stuff. Look at the MCU, for example. MCU is, is nearly perfect. Like, nearly every movie they put out is very enjoyable, makes a ton of money. I just think that, you know, they have to space out their Star Wars stuff. As far as, like, movies go, you can't keep putting out Star Wars content, especially the movies, like, every other, like, two years. you got to let yeah. things settle and just figure out where you want to take the story next, you know? I think yeah. it definitely comes down to vision. They didn't have... They, like Greg said, they saw money. They didn't see what's the next story. They saw the, Disney knows how that spend Star this. Wars is a really big is a really big thing, and people will pay to go see it. And they know that they're not, this, they're not idiots. They're a corporation. <laughs> they know. Yeah, they're a business. They, they know what people money. want. You can slap Star Wars on anything, and people will buy it. That's the crazy. That's they put the them. They put them on Wars. bananas. They put them on bananas now. That's how. Exactly. <laughs> you go to like any store, man. You go you, a box of fucking cereal. <laughs> there's Star Wars on there, and people are gonna buy it because oh, I see Star Wars on there. I like crazy. BB-8. Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. I don't know. It's I have just... my, I have my whole thing on Disney. I'm not gonna go crazy on it, but <laughs> that's, unless, that's like another time. <laughs> yeah. It's just like for Rise of Skywalker. I went into that movie very tentative very cautious one i think again as i said before bringing back jj was a mistake just because he's never finished anything in his life and it (laughs) didn't feel like that's what she said well you know how Uh but i just like i said the idea of a vision and like where we're going to became so apparent going into that movie and then watching it, it's just like, 
like you said, it's like a checklist of stuff. Nothing feels organic. You got you bring back uh, Lando, and it just feels like there was there was no reason for him to no be reason. there. No, no, it's just basically. Whatsoever. Oh, you remember him? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. exactly. We and even brought back everybody else. So you might as well bring him back too, right? Yeah, sure. even C three PO's sacrifice or whatever. It's kind of like. Oh, we need something for C three PO to do. It's and, a, but it's a lot of false emotions too. They're trying to get you mm-hmm. to feel something because they're like, "Oh, he's sacrificing his computed data, so he's going to forget everybody." But they did. They did or, that like so many times, though. As far as like sacrificing people and then just like being, oh, "Aha, I got gotcha. you." They're not you know? dead, huh? I, Like I said it's, before, we're, we're going to talk about the whole Chewy thing. You know, like when mm-hmm. Ray and Kylo are holding the ship and they're trying to pull it, and then Ray, with you know, instinct or well, reflex, just shoots lightning at the ship and blows it up. I was almost fooled for a second. I was like, "Holy shit!" Did Chewie just fucking die? And it's, then, it's, like, it's convincing because Ray, because these really re- lets out like this yelp, like Chewie. And you're yeah, like, like it was good. And then five minutes later, it's like, "Oh no, he's he's fine. It's it's all it's all good." Yeah, like I feel like in the moment I hated that, like the idea of like killing Chewie like that. I'm like, "Oh, that's awful. I don't want to see that." Mm-hmm. But I feel like I would have rather seen that than two minutes later. You tell me, "Oh, he's alive. It's fine." Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I felt like that was more cheap than what they could have done with that. I mean, yeah. I kind of knew at the time, like, when that happened, I was like, he's not dead. Because I remember in the trailer, there's like a, there's a scene in the trailer where, like, I think it was Poe, Finn, and Chewie. They're running and down they're like, the it's corridor. Like, it's like a dolly shot. And, yeah. yeah, and they're blasting, like, troopers, like, left and right. I'm like, so clearly he's alive because that scene hasn't happened yet. The other problem so, with watching trailers is that you see things and you're like... Exactly. So, like, that... Huh? I mean, and the moment it happened, I was like, oh, shit. Then I realized, like, oh, yeah, no, I forget, I, that, that scene hasn't happened yet. So I know Chewie's fine. Plus, yeah. I feel like they wouldn't have killed Chewie off that way. I mean, it would have been a huge no. thing if he actually uh, did die. It, well, I, he's I, a I legacy knew. character. You have to do it respectfully if you're going to kill yeah. somebody like that off. Yeah. Well, you got to give them the medal first, and then you can kill him. But, mm-hmm. like, and that's also really funny, too, because you people are like, talking online about, like, oh, so Miles Kanata just, like, grabbed the medal off of Leia's dead hands and was like... This is for you, Chewie. <laughs> but it's like so it's, dumb. It's so like, it's it's, 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 <laughs> it's it's fan service for the sake of fan service, and not because oh, it serves the story in a cool way, and it makes it it's cathartic. No, it's just remember the metal. Well, that's remember the thing. This? It's just remember it's he all, didn't get it, it. It's all fan service, man, and that's what like pisses me off. I mean, that's why I think these movies have been held back a lot because they're trying they're trying to appeal to a new audience, but also at the same time trying to you know appeal to the current fan base and the older fan base. And I think mm-hmm. that's kind of what holds these, these movies back. Like if this, if this trilogy was standalone, you don't have Luke or Leia or Han, Chewie, so on and so forth. I think we could have had a really good trilogy, but I Would think less because, backlash. Yeah. Cause you yeah, don't have to I, worry about. Yeah. Cause that you're crap. not, cause you're not disrespecting the characters in any kind of way, you know, like you can do your own thing with your own characters. Yeah. But you know, again, Kathleen Kennedy, when, you know, when the whole deal with Lucas, you know, you know, she said that the important thing is, is that we keep these characters in the, in the vein that you created them or however she put it and they just turned around and completely said fuck it we're not going to do that yeah. which i mean it's understandable too lucas did sell the right so technically now disney can do whatever they want but it just feels like a slap in the face man and i it makes me feel like she's a star wars fan so i love these yeah. characters i grew up with them and now to see them just so disrespected i'm just i, I oh man I, it just it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Except for yeah. Luke's arc. Luke's arc was actually really good in Last Jedi, and I have nothing to complain about. I've always stood by that since yeah, that movie it came out. I've really... always been like, the best part about that movie is how they treated him. Because I, I could understand where Ryan Johnson was coming from. Yeah. Him he, was very, he was very Yoda, Yoda-esque, you know, in that entire movie, you know? Yeah. I mean, again, like, these movies do mirror the original original trilogy, you know? Somewhat, yeah. Force Awakens. Well, Force is, Awakens is, definitely is. Definitely. It's a yeah. re- definite rehash of A New Hope. And uh, there are some elements in Last Jedi that, like, scream, oh, yeah, that's kind of like Empire Strikes Back as far as, you know, Yoda was on Dagobah, you know, after the events of Revenge of the Sith. And then after, you know, Kylo turned evil, Luke said, I'm, I'm out. And he just went to that island and just lived there for however long <laughs> until mm-hmm. Rey finds him. You know, so there are certain elements from these, from the old movies. You know, but that just shows that like Disney is just they're really again, they want to appeal to the old audience because they know it's yeah. gonna get the, the older fan base into the theaters. Yeah, in a weird it, dumb it works, way. Though. In it a works, weird though. dumb way though, now you have now you, like those weird weight the ship on your shoulder of having to please fans of everything. You don't have to I worry know. about that anymore. So now you could you could have done this in the first place, but now you could definitely do whatever the hell 
you want. Just get exactly. Ready. Well, that's what I want to see though in like these new Star Wars. I want to see things that I have never seen before. I don't want to see any more old. As much as I love the old stuff, that's had its time. Let's move on to other things. But you know, like for me personally, I mean. As far as this new trilogy is concerned, Star Wars for me, as far as like you know, Luke and the old, the old crew, everything ends on Endor for me, and that's it. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, nothing I still, else happened. Nothing else happened. I they mean, lived <laughs> happily ever after. No more problems. Yeah, yeah that's that, that's just that's. Just, I mean, I'm, I'm being I'm in like denial, but I mean, that's just me though. I, that's where I think the story ends. As far as the Skywalker trilogy, they didn't have to do anything Skywalker related. Yeah. You know, they could have kept these. They could have respected the characters and just keep them where they ended up like we don't need to really know where they ended up after this you know i don't need to know that i'm fine it's it's fun to have like novelizations like the old like the old canon books and like yeah like like, i'm cool like i'm cool with like whatever luke did after endor i'm cool with you know if han and leia ended up together and they had a kid and they lived happily ever after that'd be fine you know i'm cool with that but yeah to see them so disrespected i'm like oh man It, it it sucks man have you guys talked about finn yet we kind of did. Kind of did, yeah. Uh, we talked we about how like, I feel like they wasted his character a lot. There's two moments in this trilogy that I'm like, well, I, I guess three. But I feel like every movie, I'm like watching Finn, and I'm like, oh, I think I like him. And then I kind of lose interest, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then in Last Jedi, you have you know, his sacrifice moment that I think like redeems his, that whole arc that he had throughout that it movie. It does. And then it gets scrapped. And then in this movie, you bring up that he's potentially for, like you bring up the idea that like, oh yeah, we mentioned this before. Se- yeah, yeah, he could be force sensitive. Like that's a huge but, deal. And, and it's like, like when did, when did that happen? you never address it though. And it, like he, yeah, he says, like, I have that. something to tell you. Wait, when does he yeah. say it? Yeah, when did that? When did that? I don't like, remember that. So they never tell you out right, Daddy. The sand. Yeah. Before the worm thing, right? I have something to tell you. What? It's, and they go. Pfft. But at the end I mean, of the movie, it. you never. It's not said outright, but like I think Jana asks him something while they're on the star destroyer, and she says, "How do you know?" And he goes, "A feeling." And that's how you. Oh. Oh God. So that's 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 your cue. Like, oh, he's force sensitive. Mm-hmm. But they don't. But he so never that, gets the, He yeah. never. He never tells Ray though. So like, they spent all that time. It's such an interesting idea, and then they do nothing with it. And I'm kind of yes. like, he's he's reduced to waste his potential. He's reduced to being like the friend zone guy yelling out for Ray like five thousand times mm-hmm. for no Ray! reason. Ray! 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 Listen, he's good at yelling. He doesn't convince. If honestly, oh, he does a great. He, yeah, he when they released that first trailer for Force Awakens, I'm like, wow, he looks really out of breath. That's really, I, I believe it. That was like the 17th <laughs> take. That was, uh, JJ was like, we need one more. Just a little more emotion. He's like, this oh, time. I don't have it in me anymore. <laughs> but he got paid. That's what yeah, matters. John mm-hmm. Boyega said as much. <laughs> Listen, he, he did the best he could. He's a great actor, There man. wasn't anything there. Yeah. yeah, and they just I they wish wasted there it. There was something there. That could have been a really great arc, as far as like just a stormtrooper who turns good, and yeah. you know they did nothing with it. And that like you said before, Greg, when the movie starts and it's like these three characters are together, it doesn't feel like they were. It doesn't feel. It feels so. It doesn't it's feel. Like the, but they, they, they feel, expect it you to feel organic. No, not at all. Yeah. But like they're, they're, it's kind of like it's almost like if like the MCU if they made like Avengers and then like it cut right to Infinity War or like yeah. Endgame. It's like you're not you, oh, no. you can't be you can't expect to like these characters together like this right now when they haven't been together together like this. Yeah, I think too. Ray has never met Poe up until the like, end of Rise the last movie. Not even. I mean, they, they don't even have like a like a like a, a discussion at all in Hi, Force Awakens, I'm Ray. dude. I'm Poe. Yeah, they don't. Ever again. They actually have like the first con- actual conversation in <laughs> Rise of the Skywalker. Mm-hmm. So again, like you know, again, like I said, it just it doesn't feel organic. It just feels forced. You know, mm-hmm. it's not it's not something you would do in the third movie. Is also the thing. Exactly. They did a lot. They, they, if, it's like they tried to fit like five movies into one movie. Is also. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, because they, they try to erase the the second one. So in ways, this yeah, movie did. is essentially. To this movie is essentially the sequel to, um, yeah, Force Awakens. Awakens. Yeah, yeah. Last Jedi didn't happen, and then there's two movies in this movie. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you too much. 
Let me Here's a random you. question. What do you think of the, the random shadow cloak people on uh, Exegol, oh, the planet God. where Palpatine is? So are they, real, are they real? Are they real people? Are they ghosts? Who the fuck are, are they? Are they clones of you know failed clones of Palpatine? Maybe I. I think because, they were like me watching the Rise of Skywalker. Like that was me. I was just a thing, observing, <laughs> and just being like, "Oh, I don't know what's happening, but I'm here and I'm trying to enjoy it." That's what it felt like. Also, that's a good answer. <laughs> it's just I don't know. So what do you guys think about the Knights of Ren being in the movie? Oh, oh they're wow. wasted. Talk about a missed opportunity. I, I mean... They look cool. They, they have cool helmets you know, and you know cool funny? weapons. John, did you, did, you, did you read... You didn't read any of the Kylo Ren you know, comics, got, right? Nah. Dude, I read all, every, all four of those comics, and even in the comics, they feel wasted. They just feel like background characters. They're just nothing, you know? That's sad. It's. I mean, it's really even, sad. even like even like the way Ben Solo becomes Kylo Ren is just like it's still it doesn't work for me. You know, they could it's be just, like a, they could be villains of their own movie. I don't know why. They you could give, be. give them all personalities like they're like a bunch of like I don't know what's the word a bunch of like misfits or something like. You Maybe could characterize all those characters and give them like an arc. Yeah, you, know, you didn't need Palpatine or any of this shit. You just mm-hmm. could, it could have been Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren, and that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. That's and they it. were nothing. I, I, that sounds like a better movie. I it, want to watch that movie. Let's make our they, own movie. Let's make our own script. They could have made like a set. They, can you imagine the action sequences they could have had? Like kind of like with like mm-hmm. they could have done like something like, uh, like East, something Eastern it, Eastern influence with like samurai. They could have had like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm only imagining in my head. The possibilities and it hurts. It could be. It could have been. And again, oh, yeah. and then, wasted and then, opportunity. And then uh, Cool Man Kylo takes them all out in like three seconds at the end. Oh yeah, because you know he's the master yeah. of the Knights of Ren. Did we know. talk about my probably my favorite scene in that whole movie when um, Kylo and Rey are fighting like in their minds and going through the different locations? Oh kind yeah, that, that, that was really cool. Did. That was that was, I think that's probably my favorite part of that. That movie. was the only thing they took from Last Jedi and evolved mm-hmm. in a natural yeah. way that made sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that? <laughs> that was really but, cool, though. Yeah, because they show like they would fight each other and then, like they would bring things back with them. Yeah. Like, when he, when she took down the Darth Vader mask. It's yeah. cool seeing like new force abilities. I actually like that. Instead of keeping the force as just this, like, I, I mean, I know it's it's the thing in the galaxy. It's this driving force between light and dark and so on and so forth no it's about i like i like seeing, count. yeah oh god i like seeing the force used in new ways that i i didn't mind that so much that was actually good yeah that was really cool you know um, but, uh what else is there cut cut to a cue card of five years later mm-hmm. we're trying to think about one hour later i don't uh, there's not really that much else there I mean, besides like aesthetics and like the planets, there wasn't even really interesting planets either. I mean, what you had? You I had liked, Exegol. You know I liked Exegol. I liked that giant like structure that they had to go under to get to Palpatine. It's like this, the size of like, looked like a country. Yeah. It's like and it looked, this, like one, looked like one of the pyramids in Egypt. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. like visually speaking, that was really cool. I like that a lot. Like I guess said, there are some great visuals in this movie, man. But again, visuals like, alone can't. It save doesn't movie. do a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's fun to look Sounds at. Sounds like but... a, uh, a Zack Snyder movie right there. Yeah, <laughs> fun visuals. <laughs> lots lots of like, crazy lights and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would watch a Zack Snyder Star Wars movie today. Actually, some I would you, watch Zack. New Snyder's, characters, uh, a whole new Knights story. Oh, yeah. Wait, about yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Give I'll give him I'll give him my money. When Zack Snyder makes movies that aren't about established characters, I like them. <laughs> yeah. Minus minus. Well, now we're going really off. But I feel like this is why you, this is why Disney should be talking to like everybody, to like all these big name directors, people who haven't even made movies in a while, who could actually do interesting things. But yeah. who knows? Who knows what they're gonna do next? We're not gonna get these new. The 2022, 2024, 2026 movies now. That's not happening. No, not soon. at all. Not at all. What did you guys think about that force moment with Ray when she's hearing all the voices in her head? All the, I like it. I, I, I love that scene. I really do. 
Some cool. people people said they should have actually had the actors come back, but I don't need mm-hmm. to see them. I, I, I was cool need, enough. I don't, need that. I don't need that either. I don't need to see all like four ghosts of like Mace Windu and you know. And also, Qui-Gon they look Jin. a lot older too. So like, you'd have to de-age mm-hmm. a lot of the actors. To yeah, I, I'm, would, I'm fine. It would have been. I didn't need that, but it was. It would have been very jarring, kind of like Billy D showing up. Like it's like, oh, that's cool, but it doesn't yeah. mean anything. I it's, think it's, like you guys said, it's more powerful that the idea of them is there versus yeah. them actually being in there. Yeah. Yeah. And you, yeah, you, that's the whole, that's, that's the thing where like it's fan service, but it's not out of, it's not like distracting from the story. It's actually, they alluded to it earlier in the movie where she's trying to call out to other Jedi in the beginning of the movie when she's training on her own. Like it actually, they built that up, mm-hmm. which actually makes sense. Um, I thought her, it was cool. They brought it like, even like they brought it back as like, a, so they're, they're building up Ahsoka Tano as like an actual main character now because she shows so up happy she her voice shows it. up in that and now she's going to be in mandalorian season two oh, I'm so excited. That was... I cannot wait. rosario dawson baby i, I can't wait uh, I, a big gripe in the movie too is like again like i said before how powerful ray is like even like when she blocks the lightning that palpatine's shooting at her that's another yeah. thing too that bugs me because not even luke knew how to do that well, that's 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 you're getting you're you're not explaining you're not really showing because it wouldn't make sense because what we know from a, what what lightsaber can do is it could barely hold on to like even a little lightning let alone mm-hmm. like a whole thing because they pick yeah. it out like he's like the most powerful Sith now he's got yeah, all the guys, Sith in him guys it looks cool though <laughs> it doesn't make any <laughs> sense <laughs> how glowy she has Lens never Flare. she has never deflected a bolt of lightning in her life and she can just do it so like just so naturally like so easily i'm just gonna i'm just gonna block lightning yeah according to what we that. well that's, that's her being op is what john was no well, that's that's what you were saying yeah, like, yeah well that's what bothers me is just how overpowered she is like, i got yeah. i mean for someone who's never held a lightsaber in her in her life until you know force awakens and what little teachings that Luke gave her on in the Last Jedi, and whatever teaching Leia gave her, I doubt she can do all that. Like, listen, how listen. can you do all that? What teacher do you have, dude? A bunch of Jedi whispered in her ear, so she got it. <laughs> She's good. She's good now. Yeah, that's all she, she needed. Has, she has everything she needs because a bunch of Jedi said, "You can do this, right? Bring balance to the Force," and so on. Yeah, fuck that, dude. She's like, "Oh I yeah, that that's why that. I'm in this movie." Oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I think the beer's kicking in now, finally, because the anger's oh, coming God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else happened in this movie? Uh, I don't like that it's a scavenger hunt. The fit, the second they're like that, yes. going oh, out of the scavenger so hunt. Stupid. Well, that's that's the JJ. Like, oh, that's that's oh, JJ's way of making oh, a movie. I can understand if like you know they're looking for something that's like a hunt, like hundreds and hundreds of years old. But if it's something that like what was destroyed like what thirty years ago, maybe more than that. What was it again? Years? I don't even remember what they were looking for. <laughs> they're looking for the that's uh, the location of the the wayfinder. Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah, they yeah, they yeah. they put that thing up and then they find a location. Yeah 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 okay. yeah. They're, yeah, they're looking for that thing, but that's where that's I, a, I that's feel, already convoluted in and of itself. I feel like when the Death Star was destroyed, like after Return uh, Return of the Jedi, I feel like they would have known where the Death Star crashed when it was blown up, you know, or where the I feel was like scattered. It would have been more realistic if Palpatine was on the broken Death Star. Yeah. That's where he should like, have been. That's, that's where he died. Like, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't you know, make, I, I know it doesn't make moment, sense. But it doesn't that's, make any sense whatsoever. We were, we were mentioning that before, I think. I don't know if you were here, John. We were talking about how, like, was. The, in the lore of what we've heard and seen in Star Wars, he should have been on the Death Star because where, wherever you die, apparently Sith have the power to, like, harness and possess objects nearby where they made, died. It would have been cool if, like, you know, when Ray's going to the Death Star and she's trying to, like, get to the Wayfinder, and as she's, like, she's, like, climbing and scaling the thing, like, you hear, like, Palpatine's, like, voice echoing throughout the Death Star and, like, just haunting yeah, her, sure. haunting her. That would have been a cool thing to see, in my the closest opinion. We, the closest we get to that is that a musical cue of Return of the Jedi when she's walking around. That's the most we get Yeah. From that. Yeah. It's a shame, man. Because John Williams has to, like, carry this movie on his back with his music. Oh yeah, too. I know. I heard he was in the hospital from carrying the back, <laughs> carrying the movie on his back yeah, the entire yeah. time. I almost <laughs> should be doing oh, that. I got, so I, got, I thought you were gonna. You for, what? What? I thought you. I thought you were leading into COVID for a second. Yeah, I thought, that's oh, what I thought I got, you were going. No, no, no. I, I'm well aware of our situation right now. I'm not saying anything like that, even All though right. I probably would, knowing myself. Yeah, you dark-hearted son of a bitch. My, um, my fucked up sense of humor. 
Uh, How do we feel about space worms? Oh, we talked about that already. <laughs> yeah, that was really dumb. It uh, reminded me of Rogue One. The one thing of Rogue One that's like, why is this in here? <laughs> yeah. We need an animatronic figure that's going to do something quick. What do we got to do? A worm. Okay. Uh, we, we have to establish her power, which I guess is true. Can we, oh, we, you know, well, another thing I like about this movie. I like Han Solo. I liked him showing up. Yeah, we discussed this like, before yeah. too. Yeah, we do yeah, think that. I think it was... it's very well done. Yeah, they yes. did. They, they paid him a lot of money, but it was for a good reason. Yeah, like they, it wasn't like a throwaway scene. It was like a very. It was a very important and... scene if they were going to make Kylo Ren good again, because yeah. I mm-hmm. doubt he would have been. He would have. I doubt he could have just been like, "Okay, I'm good now on his own." I think he it's, needed. It's the only way you can convincingly tell people. They're watching the movie. Oh, he's exactly. Because if he just like decide all of a sudden, like, oh, I'm just gonna go good now, no one would buy it. So yeah, being that Han Solo kind of like gave him the okay, like, yeah, it's all right. I forgive you. You know, do what you need to do. And, it's it's yeah. more in his head though, because it's not yeah. really him. Yeah, Han's no, I think just... Adam Driver's selling the shit out of it too. Oh, like yeah. if he's not mm-hmm. if he's not giving it hundred ten percent, then that scene doesn't work at all. Yeah, exactly. It feels like we said before. Feels super fan servicey for no reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God bless Adam Driver because I feel like without him in these movies, I don't know what I don't know what they would have done. Yeah, he's like yeah. he's the best. They they cast the right person for that role, and like they did the best, the most with him in all three movies. Yeah, they did. And they could bring him back in, in mm-hmm. other things, I'm sure. Let and honestly, you. like Ray, like you said, Ray definitely has her problems, but I think. I think the cast on on their ho- on their own are doing the best them with what they could do. Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. And well, Greg yeah, was, was saying. Fine. Greg was saying too before. If they make another another set of movies with these characters later on, we I feel like it would be a lot better because now we actually. I mean, they're well respected on their own now, mm-hmm. so we don't have the crutch of the nostalgia. You could just make movies with these characters now. Exactly. I mean, if they still want to keep around like C-3PO and R2-D2, I'm perfectly fine with that too. I, I mean, I love yeah, they're the in all these. They're, they're like the, they're I, in all these movies. You know what's funny is that I just, not that it's funny, but I feel like through all of these movies, like you really follow the story of the droids rather than the actual characters themselves because the droids are in legit every movie aside from like, you know, Rogue One. And, you know, uh, they are in Rogue One. Am I? Oh, yeah, they are. That's right. Before they like take a, like off to go to Scarif. Second. Yeah, a split second. Yeah, they are there. All right, so not Solo then, but they're in every movie. You they know? aren't. Oh, you're right. They aren't they're the one constant in every movie, and I, I like that. So I hope they don't go mm-hmm. anywhere. No, they would, they would, they would, if they feel like they, they're, the, they're like kind of like the glue that holds everything together. Yeah, you know. Aesthetically it, speaking. Yeah. Uh, what did I want to say? God damn it. I forgot what I wanted to say. I feel like we covered oh. a lot of the ground of the movie. What do you guys think of Ray being a Palpatine? We didn't discuss oh, this one. I just, it's no, it does nothing because they don't really yeah. give it the respect and the weight that it deserves. No, it also I makes fe- no sense. I feel like that's their excuse to you know give reason as to why Ray is so powerful. Oh, because she's a Palpatine. Yeah, I, I like kinda... I like the idea of her being a nobody, and it's the whole like we can get into too. it. Well, that was the whole like, thing too. You don't need to be. I. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the kid. You know, at the end of Last Jedi, when the kid you know grabs the room with the Force. Well, that was the whole. That was the whole theme of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It was that, that, that you don't sense. have to come from somebody to beat somebody. Essentially, yeah. you know, you can be I a think, nobody and still, yeah. you know, you know, make your mark on on history, so to speak. I think had we not spent a whole movie establishing her as a nobody, I would have bought this more. Yeah. But the I fact that, that there was a whole movie, like say, like don't worry about it, it doesn't mean anything, and I like, see though actually kind of did, but. Not really, and that's yeah. and that gets that gets into the weeds of like talking about directors communicating with each other again because you don't if if JJ had the idea of this from the start you think he would have told Ryan no, mm-hmm. but if he didn't but if he did he didn't I have know. the idea that's the issue is yeah, yeah. he because again they just scrambled for ideas they didn't really know that they were gonna do that JJ and his mystery boxes was just like you know it would be cool if we gave her like a mystery origin. She's like, well, what's what's the end of it? I'm like, they're not gonna care. They're not gonna care. Just just make it a mystery, and I yeah. love it. This That's like what it comes down to. And then yeah. when it's like JJ solve your mystery, he's like, uh, it's Palpatine. And I'm like, you're pulling at straws, man. That's what yeah. happened. Yeah, he was it's... just like, what's what's the? It's 
it's the game of like trying to s- subvert expectations that just it doesn't doesn't work there was no logical reason to give her a sufficient origin because nothing was planned had they planned that from the beginning i think we could have planted seeds in all three movies to do yeah. something with it but like i said her origin wasn't decided until the third movie which right same thing with palpatine too the, you know with yeah. him coming back i can understand if they again like i can understand if they put like they planted some seeds in like in Force Awakens and last year, like little hints here and there that Palpatine was still in the picture. I would have bought Palpatine coming back. And of course, like there's no, of course there was no hint in Force Awakens and Last Jedi that you know the hints to that. It's just one of those, again, opening crawl, the, the dead speak, and Palpatine's back. Okay, Except you go. It. Except it just just no, it's cool. Don't just, don't, just don't think it. about it. Don't think about it. Just, yeah, just go yeah, with it. Yeah, just, just go, go with it. it. Right, you guys like Palpatine, right? He's back. Here you go. Just take it, okay? You like the you like the memes, right? Do it, do it. Yeah, well, we brought him back. Yeah. So we did. It. We did it. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah. Wasn't that like a Fortnite thing that you would only understand that? Yeah, they Fortnite? they introduced they introduced lore into the into the whole universe that you can only see on Fortnite. It was like what? actual Star Wars canon information that you can only find out if you played Fortnite. Oh, that's bogus. And apparently, I think it was it was it was literally a whatever. The dead speak. It was whatever Palpatine put out into the universe. Is you actually get that the, the dialogue from what he said in Fortnite? Oh. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great idea. Yes. This... Oh man, what a mess. I I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, we're I... hitting. We're almost hitting in. Uh, we're almost. We're at, we're at an hour and fifteen minutes right now. So I think Always. we're gonna we're gonna close this out. Holy but, uh, shit! Any are, closing yeah. thoughts before we uh, wrap this up? I mean, I think I've said all I need. All I needed to say. Yeah. Anything you want to see from the future of Star Wars that would be better than this or worse than this or like what do you? Well, ideal- I don't want to see anything what, worse than this. Well, no. What's your? <laughs> I, what's your? I, all right. Here's a better question. What's your ideal future of Star Wars when it comes I, to movies? Listen, I'm a very simple guy. I'm a very simple guy. I just want to see something new, something fresh. With a co- with a, a cohesive beginning, middle, and an end, you know, and a, a path getting like know where you guys want to go, and that's it. You know, I'll go along with anything. You know, like like the Skywalker saga is now closed, so now, the, you know, you can go anywhere in the galaxy. It doesn't matter how far you go. You can go a hundred years in the future. I don't really give a shit. You can do things with, the, with these new characters, with Ray, Finn, and oh, you can do something with that. As long as it's fresh, new, and you guys know where this whole thing is going to lead. Mm-hmm. And that's it. I don't need anything else. You know, I, I have n- no suggestion as to like, you know, what they want to do as far as like, if they want to do build like a whole new empire esque thing or, or first order thing or resistance rebellion. I don't really care. I just want something new and something that makes sense. Yeah. That's, so that's perfectly that's said. Really it. It's very, it's fairly simple. You know, I mean, it, it, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm not, you're not asking for much. Right? Don't, I don't think you're asking for I, much. I, I think collectively a lot of Star Wars fans would probably agree to that too, you know? Yeah. But after, after, say, after, all the, after all the confusion that's happened over the past five years. Yeah. You, you have similar thoughts, John? Or yeah, about I kind of I th- I kind of second that. I want more stuff like The Mandalorian, more things that have things that I recognize but do not relate to really anything that we've seen. Mm-hmm. So I can agree to that. The yeah, more things that I recognize but aren't tied to the original lore. Different stuff is all I'm asking for. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a really I, cool thing too. Would be just to like you know explore more of like the criminal underworld of Star Wars as well. That's always interesting to look into. Yeah, that's something like, that like, really hasn't been explored yet, as far as the Mandalorian goes. Well, they have a they have a solid foundation now with that, so they could literally. They could mm-hmm. spend two or three more seasons, more even more doing that. Yeah, we don't Honestly, need. To be... In terms of movies, I think I just need a break. I think that's I really think, what I think we all to. need a break. I was gonna I say, we... I was yeah, gonna say, I'm done. I don't need any more movies. Period. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I would, I would. I'm not gonna say no if they make them down the line, but we we need at least. I would I... say ten years. At I think least. we need a pre- yeah. I think we need a break from Star Wars as far as movies go. I mean, they have to figure out what they want to do. 
give it some time, you know? I mean, when was, when did Return of the Jedi come out? Like what, 1983? 83. 83. 83. So it was 16 years. 16 years until Menace. They need to take their time. I mean, over time, they can still like put out their books, you know, and their comics and, you know, video games or TV shows, whatever they want to do. As far as movies are a big seller, you know, that that's where they're going to make most of their money is from the movies. So, so if they're going to make movies, make self-contained little stories, then you don't have to worry about telling this big picture about here's exactly. a trilogy. Just make, just make, get Taika Waititi, get Zack Snyder, get John Favreau, get, I don't know. I'm just throwing out names out there. Like Catherine mm-hmm. Bigelow, I mean, just get random if, people and let them make their own thing. Yeah. If you're going to make a big epic trilogy, figure out what that trilogy trilogy is about. And why are you telling that story? Sure. And map out that trilogy. Exactly. Know where you want to go. To learn from yeah. this this trilogy in, uh, specifically. Yeah. I, Just, I, they I, can't I, be blind. They they have to know what they caused. They're yeah. not going to say it. They gotta they gotta keep their reputation up. And they they it would be a disaster if they mentioned publicly like oh we messed up, but they know they messed up. Oh, it would be. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're a Star Wars fan, I highly do recommend reading some of the books and the comics as well. The comics are really good right now if you need your Star Wars fix. You know, mm-hmm. if you didn't like, you know, this new trilogy, go read the comics. The comics are actually really good. And, you know, ma- you know, Mafio obviously knows how the books are. I haven't read any of the, like, the actual hardcover books. But there, are some, there are some really good books. I mean, I could yeah. mention, I mean, there's one called Bloodline. It's about Leia in between Return and Force. Where it's yeah, about her like about rising that. up in politics. There's right. another one that's like it's got um, crap. Um, what's the? I'm I'm losing it right now. There's like a bunch of books though. You can get you got Clone Wars, you got old trilogy, new trilogy is, and they're gonna be making more books. They they made a new book about the uh, what's her face Padme Amidala recently. That's apparently really good. Yeah, it's about her before she rose to to polit- like she rose up yeah. in power. Uh, but yeah, I think that really puts a nice ribbon on everything. Uh, mm-hmm. That thank you guys for joining me in talking about Star Wars and not lashing out at each other. Because <laughs> if this was Twitter, Neither. if this was Twitter, we'd be all be dead right now. Oh, definitely. You, you mentioned to I, a fan girl, like a, a Kylo fan girl. Oh, I didn't like his arc. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we kept the civil here. We had fun. We did. And we talked to her. me and Greg were saying how we're going to talk about for like maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. It's we been exceeded al- way we're, beyond we're that. Almost, almost two hours, I think. Jeez, bro. We, we started at like 9, 10, I think. And it's almost 11 o'clock. I think oh. next one we should do, if we're going to do more of this, we should do like, we should do like an MCU kind of thing too. Like just oh, discuss down. like the MCU. If we're, if we're in cool. our homes till August, we, we, get, we have a lot of cop- topics to cover. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm down for it, man. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Uh, what's but yeah, the I want... MCU? Hmm? I'm kidding. I said, what's the MCU? I was going to bitch flash you with a goddamn moves movie about, about, <laughs> they, They're apparently moves about superheroes or something. Uh, yeah, something like that. I mean, I, I mean they, they have characters the like, you know, they have, ca- they have characters like Captain Puerto Rico and, and uh, Spider-Boy, apparently. Oh, I like, I, Captain, I like mm. Captain Puerto Rico. He has yeah, I hear, he's a really, I hear he's really cool, actually. You know, yeah, he throws chocolates, apparently. That famous catchphrase of his. Mm. See you later, amigos. That was made up on the spot. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, anybody want to plug anything before we uh, end this? Anybody got any? You writing? Any, anybody writing a book? Anybody uh, doing anything fun? Nope. Oh, really. you stuck inside. Uh, hey, listen, man. If you're listen, if you're a gamer and you know you got nothing to do, pick up Doom Eternal, pick up Animal Crossing. I, I second both of those. <laughs> you beat the game. You beat Doom Eternal. No, I'm saying like, I, it took yeah. me. A, it took me like five, six days. It took, it took me like two nights to beat it. <laughs> Every time but, I played it, it was like a heart thumping, adrenaline rushing move of game. Yeah. Every single every single time you walk into a new stage, it's like here's a hundred demons. Have fun. <laughs> Great. Try the try, try the uh, times. to get a chance. Try the master levels. They're actually pretty insane. The worst. Oh God. But I mean, if if this whole not to get into like the whole COVID thing in our situation right now, but if we're still quarantined three months down the line, I would suggest even for Star Wars fans, read the books. You know, read a couple of books. Pick up some comics. You know, or you know, you can't buy comics well, now. You obviously, can com- but comics. What comics? Comicsology. Comicsology.com is the website if you want to do online reading. 
if you just Star Wars fix, man, go read those. If you haven't seen the TV shows like Clone Wars or Rebels, go watch that as well. Those are just as good, you know? I agree. And I guess that's it then. Uh, that's thank it. you guys for joining me. Again, God bless the, the nurses and the doctors and everybody out there right now. And uh, see you guys later. Peace out. You can see me at Moff. Did they freeze on me? They froze on me. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. oh, oh wait, there Jesus. we go. What the f- <laughs> My connection. It's, it's funny that like as I'm ending this, we lose everybody. Oh, we just uh, lost John. No, wait, yeah, oh, you, he's back. You, back. you can right. find you can find me at Mothman Jones everywhere. Subscribe, uh, like, ring that bell, all that fun stuff. You know what to do. And uh, if you like this, tell me in the comments down below, and we'll do this more often. Uh, but yeah, everybody stay safe. Uh, and that's it. See y'all later. May the force be with you, or not, if you don't care. <laughs> Bye. May the force be with you. Always. Peace. Peace. Peace.